let's define a few terms yeah so, so let's define yeah. uh, terms first sure so realism so what does terms mean <laughs> okay uh okay that's a bit tricky that's a gen yeah <laughs> Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah where today I'm joined with my main man Subur and we're going to be reviewing a discussion Muhammad Hijab had finally with Jordan Peterson isn't it Subur? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright bro take the lead because I'll, you know we were watching it together yeah, and I think the people in the dawah scene like yourself probably benefited more from it than the layman like me there's certain kind of big moments that I was like yo You're this not is a layman. <laughs> Richard Dawkins they were Wait, talking did you call about... me Hazrat? no I didn't call you Hazrat oh maybe you should <laughs> right, in, right in the beginning they were talking about you know whether they actually need an argument for God's existence, whether God is basically a proposition. Why bother with the propositional arguments? And if you remember, you know, yeah, what does that mean? God being a proposition? I thought he was just talking about the contingency argument. Yeah, exactly. So what basically happened is Hijab was speaking about the contingency argument. Yeah. And um, what happened is that Peterson, uh, Dr. Peterson basically uh, was trying to say, well, do we even need one? You know, don't make essentially God a proposition. And he said one of the problems with Richard Dawkins is, you know, he wants you to accept the idea that, you know, it's it's all propositional. Well, and you then, said that a couple of times. What's propositional? As in the point he's trying to get to is you don't need to make God into something you need to prove. You need to rationally provide evidence for necessarily um, and that's why he spoke about this supposed divine spark as in you can have a belief without actually having uh, to put forward a rational argument for it necessarily yeah so uh, you know when we were talking about this earlier before we uh, started yeah. recording the world is it real this isn't real what is real how do you define real Yes, it's real. Do we necessarily need to prove it's real rationally? Uh, to some people. Some but people. can we do that? Can we actually prove the world is real? Um, I would say so, wouldn't you? Well, it seems like we can prove everything like rationally. Like Descartes, you go, yeah. I think, therefore I am. I mean, that's a related point, but you don't always have to prove every single thing. And you can't prove the world is real. Because you have to presuppose the world is real in order to make an argument in the first place. You know? oh, so, it, so basically, long story short, you don't have to, like human beings, we believe in right and wrong. We believe truth is valuable. We believe the world is real. We believe human beings have other minds. These things don't need to be proven. They're like Wait, you, we believe human beings have other minds? As in other human beings have minds. Okay, uh, okay. They're, they're not just robots. Yeah. So, you know, these things are what philosophers and they, they spoke about this self-evident truths okay this is what was being referred to and it was a really nice section do you remember when um hijab mentioned uh justin barrett of an instinct in believing in god what's his last name barrett how do you spell that yes um, that was a very good one yeah. yeah what did you think of that well that's one of the few points i actually understand <laughs> so, uh... i'm sure you understood more than this i'm sure you understood so more. i mean that was that's good we use it in speaker's corner as well isn't it yeah we do it's like it's a very credible research that was done with thirty-two thousand people to prove that look even young kids have a innate yearning to believe in in, in a god so yeah and it, what, what I liked about it was even Jordan was like, oh, Barrett, uh, how, how are you spelling Yeah, yeah, that? maybe you should play that for them. Yeah, no, they don't deserve it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was also very interesting about his style um, in, in, in regards to how he approached the discussion. So it wasn't like, you know, uh, my worldview against your worldview. I found his a way of approaching it very humbling. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm here to learn. Are there other things that you think, places that I've misstepped in a serious manner that should be rectified as far matter? as you're concerned? Even the body language, it was very much like, okay, so what about this? What about this? What about this? He was pushing back at points. Hijab was pushing back at his points. But there was mutual respect. Mm. It wasn't just like, okay, I'm going to prove you wrong. You're going to prove me wrong. But there was a lot of, okay, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we're going to get into some of those things. But I think that type of attitude is quite respectable. Yeah, you're 100% right. It wasn't antagonistic and it wasn't because we know he's trying to release his stuff in the Arabic language. So he does want to maintain his Muslim audience. Yeah. 
So we understand that element of things as well from a marketing side and from that element. Which is good, is, which is actually yeah. very, very much the right thing to do. If if you have good ideas, you want to share them with people. Why neglect a huge part of the world, the Muslim world? In fact, I was very happy to see um, that on Twitter, he, you know, he said his book has been translated into Uzbek, you know, in Central Asia. Also, he has an Arabic channel. Um, so this is also very good. And this was a great discussion because you had a traditionalist Muslim and you had Peterson and they went head to head. Who's the traditional Muslim? I thought, <laughs> I thought hijab was the uh, discussion yes. with him. So who's this guy? None of them were holding back with their views. Yeah. They saw where their views contradicted. They saw where their clashes were. They saw where their convergence were. And they tried to find commonalities where there was commonalities and where there was mis misunderstandings. There was misunderstandings. But, you know, that's what I really like. And, and there, there's something very interesting um, that Hijab mentioned about international relations and realism. I think we should maybe play that clip and then... Nah, can... forget it. Go ahead! Put him on! One of the points that Hijab raised um, about um, the warlord comment. Um, what about this relativism that you're talking about? Uh, the real no, the, the realism, realism. Yeah. Okay, so firstly, let, let, let's uh, let's define a few terms because obviously yeah. these guys, <clears throat> they're both well educated. They both uh, understand what they mean by these terms. And uh, for someone that's not familiar, you have to sort of define things. Yeah. So, so let's define yeah. uh, terms first. Sure. So realism. So what does terms mean? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, that's a bit tricky. Um, <laughs> The easy, easiest thing to do is to bypass what you said and uh, <laughs> to, to stick to this, yeah? So he kept saying realism. Yeah. Realism means, uh, so realism is a theory in international relations, in the field of international relations, in political science. Okay. And realism is essentially the idea that states mm -hmm. care about their own security, their own oh. self-interest. That's the goal. Why didn't you just say that? Well, be because uh, it's, it, it's rather than saying it in the long-winded way, it's just easier to say realism. Okay. okay? Now, there's an alternative idea, uh, which is liberalism. Now, this isn't oh. the liberalism that, you know, Muhammad Hijab had the, the, the debate with uh, Dr. Lars Ghul, and he's, uh, you know, uh, speaking about having, uh, you know, <laughs> sex with the dog and stuff. That, that's not that type of video. You're somebody you're that must dying. be watching you're pornography. Dying. Hijab, please, allow me, allow me, please. Yeah? Yeah. So we're not talking about liberalism as a ideology here we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're speaking about liberalism <laughs> as a theory in international, international relations which is that you know states are um uh, essentially uh, there to um have have goals beyond their self-interest to cooperate to have inter interdependence trade globalization you know all these types of things so what the comment that was made yeah. uh, by uh, uh, Peterson, which Hijab was was raising, was that he called uh, the the Prophet a warlord. Yes. I'm, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this, right? Yeah, I mean that was the thing that I think had the Muslim uh, Muslims up in arms. To be honest, like hearing metaphorically, yeah, metaphorically, <laughs> of course. But I, mean, I think anyone who had that was was furious. Yeah, uh, especially. You know, somebody that you th you assume to be as balanced, as nuanced, and as logical as Jordan comes across, for him to make such a blasé statement like this yep. was, I don't know, the Muslim community. I th I think felt hurt yep. and disappointed, yeah, more so than anything else. And I I think if that comment came from someone else, so if it came from an Islamophobe, it came from, um, you know, a right winger or uh, someone that's at, that works you, at KFC, <laughs> just just some other, I, I think the comment would have been, I you think know, his name is Marv. <laughs> yeah, like Marv, Marv, yeah. it would have been water over a duck's back. Yeah. But because a lot of Muslims follow, uh, you know, his stuff, and they see some a correspondence between Islam and a certain teaching of Islam and certain things that he's saying, we're still talking about Marv. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think they got offended, you know, at that comment. What do yeah, you so I mean, if you're working in KFC and your name's Marv, you shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't really. talk about international relations yeah, and the state like, of anarchy. Why and don't Hobbs you and... just serve the sachets of ketchup, not charge extra for them, because it's preposterous, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's, that's wrong. But coming back to the warlord thing, because I think we shouldn't digress. On, we shouldn't digress, yeah, indeed. We should, yeah. shouldn't do that. Like, indeed. We should stick with, the, stick with the point. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, yes. was, was, that was hilarious because when we were watching it, 
there were there's like three bits. Are where, you gonna put them in? Uh, you have to put them uh, in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look for them to get straight in my mind. Yes. Now, yes. and so there's that conflict. Yes. Yes. I'm firmly aware of that. It was, and it was like a serious discussion, and then <laughs> Peterson would say something like, "You know, isn't this the case or something like this?" And Jabba would be like, "Yes." I mean, the, the fact that he came dressed in a circus tent it was bad enough uh, as it was. Um, we have to give respect uh, where it's due, and yeah. you know, he took the comment back. Um, and he, you know, realized um, that actually there was more to it, and and you know, hijab explained in a beautiful way about the Medinan period, about essentially that there was a realist framework within which states were working in international relations back then. You know, if you didn't conquer the Persians, they're going to conquer you. If you didn't conquer the Romans, they're going to conquer you. Yeah. And you know, it, the world was a was a messy place. Um, so there's nothing exceptional. Or remarkable about Islam from the perspective uh, uh, of the way that it deals with uh, states, because you know people have to do that. So, him taking the comment back and realizing that were it was injudicious was was, was really humbling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred uh, <laughs> percent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're right. The the fact that he retracted it, and especially like he's got a big. You know, far right following Douglas Murray, Ayan Hirsi, Ali, Sam Harris, which, by the way, is it's not representative of you know. He's brought on the guy from Guantanamo. Um, he's brought on uh, the the woman that escaped from North Korea. Like, okay. we, we would not we would not classify him absolutely as as, as, as right wing. But you know, obviously, people who see certain. Um, things that may may fit with the nuclear family and conservative values, they they go towards. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he definitely attracts that that crowd. Um, yeah, that crowd. But you're right; it is good to make that distinction. And for him to kind of bring hijab on is commendable. And another point that I really liked was when the hijab brought up the point about a Muslim a Muslim country. That didn't have a strong economy or something along those lines. Or? Oh yeah, there's this this little discussion about uh, GDP, and then yes. and then hijab brought up the Ottoman Empire, and in the past, obviously um, even Bahrain. Even uh, uh, I, I believe he said oh, um, Brunei, he, yeah. he gave the example of Brunei, um, but also uh, historically we can speak about the um, Abbasids. We can speak about the. Uh, Umayyads, uh, you know, Muslims, when they had their, uh, you know, their governance, uh, they were the the people who are far ahead than the rest of the world in terms of their uh, political system, their economic system, their cultural system, the science that they actually taught, uh, the the development of philosophical ideas. All of these things were quite strong, including, of course, their gross domestic product. So we we can't just take a snapshot of uh, today's uh, Muslim countries and say, you know, yeah. these things. But again, again, he was very appreciative of of, of you know n- knowing these things. And for for the Marvs that work at <laughs> the KFC, Marvs. Uh, out there. I mean, and their managers who go, yes, <laughs> <laughs> nicely, uh, nicely in, slipped uh, in there. Yeah. Yeah. Firstly, in this day and age where it's it's cool to be Islamophobic, seeing somebody uh, of of a high kind of profile as Jordan Peterson reaching out to the Muslim community and seeing uh, and being received well by the Muslim community. I mean, if you look at the comments there and you look at the amount of Muslims that are appreciative, not that he's done Islam any favor, but just the fact that he has uh, allowed a Muslim onto his platform, an Orthodox Muslim. And he's willing to yeah. learn. And yeah. And he's asking, like, you know, he, he said this before the discussion that I'm not going to have a debate. I want to learn something. And you know, mm, then he's he's asked, and, and and he's he's listening with the in, he's asking questions with the uh, intention to learning, learning. and yeah. you can see that you can see that, and it went both ways. And I think uh, things like this are a good lesson for just how discussions and civil discussions and these things should actually take place. Hundred percent. Was there anything else? No. <laughs> It's not quite the same as yes. yes it's not. <laughs> but you got to put that in there. Come on. Oh. And also, I think just for the people that are watching, mashallah, you know, definitely encourage your children. Don't just send your children to just learn generic subjects just so they can bring money home. But really getting them to learn uh, Islamic knowledge from knowledgeable people, sending your kids to credible institutions so they can benefit, so they can defend Islam in a academic, articulate, erudite way, like it was done. Like this, I think, is a really good example, and I think we should make dua for uh, the brother uh, Muhammad. Uh, what's his name? What was it? Yes, Muhammad Hadib. What? Yeah, yeah. I think, Muhammad I think that block there. Yeah. <laughs> so, mashallah. You know, I did see, you know, the amount of books 
he went through them several times even when he was going through that that thing when he had the allergic reaction that I'm not going to mention oh that. yes yes let's 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 yeah, yeah let's not mention let's that not please mention that but he was still still doing it and I think that's why we were so hurt when it didn't happen this is something you need to take forward take from this grow from this you know look at some of the stuff that hijab said and do your own research and you know note it down discuss it with other people and just learn it don't just watch this sort of stuff we're going yeah that's that that's it take that that's Marv. it take it Marv. <laughs> yeah. all right so uh yeah let's leave it there don't forget to subscribe to sabur ahmed the main guy when it comes to evolution mashallah can i say you're doing your phd or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. he's doing his phd on uh philosophy of biology brought to the mashallah and until next time assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam